this movie, this movie, oh boy, this is just kind of a problem overall. Well, if you can't tell from the title, this movie is in fact two movies, but at the same time still one. It's kind of complicated. The movies premiered in Japan on July 16th, 2011, and then in the US with the white version getting a limited theater release on December 3rd, and then the black version getting released on Cartoon Network on December 10th, 2011. I for life of me can't even fathom why they thought this was a good idea, splitting it up into two separate movies. I honestly can't think of a good reason why, except for ticket sales, which really wouldn't improve all that much anyway. But I guess we should pretty really get around to summarizing this plot, shouldn't we? Ash and Friends, with Dawn and Brock being out of the picture and now replaced with Silent and Iris, are headed to Endowick Town for yet another festival battle tournament kind of thing, just for the opening. You know, the standard opening for these movies now, which is really generic, honestly. Anyway, Ash accidentally comes across Vecini and of course befriends it. However, at the same time, a man named Damon is out to reactivate a mysterious energy called the Dragon Force that will cause a great destruction, but he doesn't really know it will cause great destruction. He ultimately just wants to use it for the helpful purpose of reviving his lost, broken people. Damon is backed by a legendary dragon for the Unova region. Either Reshiram or Zekron, depending on which version of the movie you're watching. And later on, Ash is armed with the opposing dragon and has to stop Damon's plans of releasing the chaotic dragon force and accidentally destroying the world with some emotional plot stuff for Victini. I'm sorry that the plot summary for this movie is a little light, but there's really not much to this movie overall. It's a very simple premise and simple story overall, and it honestly helps the movie considering the whole version difference thing. Keeping the movie simple makes it a bit more digestible, which makes it easier to buy the whole version difference thing between the two movies. And oh boy, there are very minor differences between these two movies. The only thing that changes between two movies is the opening, with White starting off with Damon in the desert and Black starting off with da the Damon in the frozen tundra, meeting what his with people living in that specific area. The Pokemon Damon has, a Gothitil in black and a Ryunculus in white, a shiny Pokemon, a shiny Golurk owned by Damon's mother in black, and a shiny Hydreigon owned by Damon's sister in white, the, a number of background Pokemon that show from time to time, as well as which dragon Ash and Damon are riding respectively. Ash riding Zekrom because he represents ideal in white, and riding Reshiram because he represents truth in black, and of course Damon rides the opposing dragon. Again, differences between the various movies are so minor that it feels like there's not even a point in separating them in the first place. Again, I can't fathom why they did this. The whole thing with the Dragon Force is at least something different, and having the main villain who's mostly an okay person who just doesn't really listen and is misguided is pretty unique for this series. The closest we got to it was the third movie, and that was a little girl. This is a grown, full-grown man doing this stuff with his own strong motivations, that are understandable. Ash is very much the main character of this story, as well as his relationship with Vitini being the main crux of the emotional driving force for the whole thing. However, this gives Siren and Islands, I mean Siren and Iris, absolutely nothing to do throughout the whole thing except for run the background. They literally do nothing throughout the whole movie, and it was a problem in the Sino movies with Dawn and Brock not really getting to do much, depending on which movie you're doing. Hell, Brock barely did anything throughout those whole four movies, but it really becomes apparent here with Silent and Iris just sitting by the sidelines with all, literally the whole movie. Overall, it's a short, simple movie with an infuriating gimmick that I'm glad they never tried to bring back with another movie. It'll be really annoying if they split X and Y into two separate movies. That'll be just stupid. I will say that it is interesting if you just want to turn your brain off for a good minute. It's worth the watch for that alone. And I also have to thank God for the fact that the DVD comes bundled with both versions, because that would be an annoyance to gather both versions for, you know, full things. So you don't have to buy them separately, you can just buy the DVD, which contains both. So yeah, that's down. That's one more movie down. See you in the next one, which thankfully is not two separate movies.